friends, what's going on? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and today um, I'm going to show you how to play this finger style intro to You've Got a Friend in Me. This is the Randy Newman song you know from Toy Story, probably. Now, this is going to be based off of a fantastic cover that's on YouTube. It's with Claire Ryan and her dad. Uh, he is a great guitarist. Her voice is incredible. It's a great video. I recommend watching it. But his sort of arrangement is so cool, and I really just wanted to learn it the second I heard it. So, um, this is just gonna be for the first four measures, okay? Uh, it's a great little just finger style, distinctive as hell kind of approach to that first four measures, but this will get you over that hump. Um, it's a great little thing to warm up with or just get going, turn some heads with, even if you don't know the full song. So a lesson for the uh, entire song, I'll keep that separate. I just wanna focus on this intro now and let's get on ahead. So quick note is check out the website, playsongnotes.com because I have a PDF that I made, I put together, it's a great, companion to this video, right? It has not only the tab, but some finger charts. It has some uh, some tips on approaching the chords, on how to approach some of the muting technique you're gonna be doing, and uh, some ways you can spice up the rhythm. Uh, I sort of marked up all for you. So it's a great aid. Uh, thanks to all of you who support me on Patreon. But with that said, let's get to this lesson and uh, I'll show you how to play this song. All right, uh, this is what the tab looks like, okay? Now I wanna talk you through a few different things here. Um, let's first look at the chord shapes we're gonna be using, you know? So if we were to basically just break it down into, you know, go from this finger style tab to these chords, I think this is a nice way to sort of get a lay of the land. Basically, uh, Big picture here, the first measure is gonna be going between a C and a G over B, okay? And that's gonna end with an A minor. So this is a very common walk down you'll find in lots of songs, right? The C to a G over B to an A minor. But I wanna talk about some of the little, little nuances here. With your left hand in particular, okay? You wanna have your ring finger on the, the bass note of the C, obviously, and your index finger up here. And we're basically gonna be plucking the fifth string and then the B and the G string. I'll talk about right hand a little bit later, but notice that those are the three strings we're playing. Now for the G over B, um, I think it's important that you want to bring in your pinky for this um, third fret on the B string, and use your middle finger for the second fret of the fifth string. This is pretty much uh, nothing controversial so far, but what I'll recommend is keep your index finger down the whole time you're doing this on the first fret of the second string. And the reason why is you're gonna then go to an A minor. And this is a very fast moving part of the song, okay? So practice doing that, right? From that C to the G over B to the A minor. And notice how your index finger is in the same spot the whole time, okay? That's gonna be important later on, uh, I'll get to it. The next part here, I have it as G sharp and G. It's basically uh, just, you're gonna play the sixth string and the second string. Um, so I'm using my left ring and left pinky fingers, and I'm basically going, you know, from fourth fret on the sixth and second string to third fret on the sixth and second string. So pretty straightforward there. Then we're going back to a C, okay? And now this next part is tricky. So we're only playing the fifth and fourth strings here, but notice how... Um, for this first chord, I don't know what you would call this one, but basically you want your ring finger where it would normally be for a C. And the way I think of this chord is I'm in a C position and I'm basically putting my pinky down on the fourth fret of the th uh, fourth string. So go from a regular C to this. This is how I think of this chord, this little first uh, of these two double stops here. And then the next one, um, is going to be, think of it as a C chord, just slid up one fret, okay? So from fifth to fourth string, it's fourth, fourth fret, third fret. But the chord before that is third fret, fourth fret, okay? And with those two chords, you know, you wanna get used to going between them. The one, the thing I'll say about this first of these double stops is it's okay if your pinky is sort of draping into these first, second, and third strings because you're only playing the fourth and fifth string. Okay, and we're ending, uh, we're going to the last measure, which is just a C. First couple notes are um, the fifth, fourth, and third strings of a C. And then the last little chord here is basically the bassiest two notes of a C just moved down, you know, towards the, the head of the guitar, one fret. See that? Okay, so um, if I played through those chords just once each, it would be like this. 
Okay, so this is a good thing to get used to, and as you practice this riff, as you practice the finger style, I think it's helpful every now and then to come back to just the chords, you know, because the timing is going to be tricky, you're going to have your own little struggle with that, perhaps, uh, I know I did, finding a nice groove is good, but at the end of the day, I would just remember that I'm just playing chords here, right? And you could sort of mess up with, or mix with the, the finger picking however you want. But that's how you do the left hand chord shapes here. And then now let's look at the right hand stuff that we're going to be playing with the finger style. All right. Okay. So here, um, basically, first up, uh, let's look at this first measure. We're going to basically do the first part is um, kind of like a little arpeggio and a C major chord here. The thing I'll say about this though, there's a few nuances. One is I recommend for the first two notes using your right thumb for the fifth string and then the fourth string. And the reason why is you want to basically free, you want to get your index finger free for some of the next few notes that are coming. This is some of the hardest stuff here you're going to do in this whole sequence is go from... Okay, so we're going um, fifth string to fourth string to third string on a C, nothing crazy there. Second string, we're going to go open to first, hammer it on, okay? But then, okay, and I'm using my middle finger to play that second string, hammer it on with my left index. Okay, but now what I want to do is basically go to the G over B position, and I want to use my index and middle for the second and first string of the G over B. So the, this is the whole reason for the C starting with your thumb twice is you want to you want to leave your um, your index and middle ready to get to that to that C um, or to the second and first string of the G over B. As opposed to if you end the C with your ring finger here, right? Then I have to sort of get my um, index and middle, it's a further jump to get them to that G over B. So I would practice this first measure like this really slowly. One more time. Okay. And then um, next up, we're going to have these like X's that happen on the uh, on the tab here. What that's going to refer to is this idea of sort of um, muting all the strings or silencing the strings with the fleshy part of your, your right hand here. So the idea there is you're going to have strings ringing. You just want to bring your palm in and some sort of chop the strings lightly with the fleshy part of your right hand and try to get them all. You don't just want to do the thickest couple or the thinnest couple. You want to hit all the strings and it should kill the sound. Okay, so that's what that technique is gonna be. So back to the tab here, we're gonna end on the A minor, or we're gonna start the second measure with the A minor. Okay, A minor, just thumb, right thumb, and um, uh, either index or middle on the second string and then go to the third string, second fret. Then do another chop, another silence right there. So the first two measures so far. Okay, and then next is going to be this G sharp to the G, uh, basically right thumb and uh, right index and um, after we play each of these, we're going to sort of silence the strings as well. Here I just silence them by lifting up my left hand fingers. So play it, lift them up, lift them up. Lift them off the fretboard, but still keep them on the strings. It keeps the sound, um, it keeps the strings from ringing. If you take your hand all the way off the strings, the strings will uh, ring and that's bad. So. Okay, so the first two measures. Right? Okay, and 
it's going to end on a C. Okay, really uh, pretty straightforward there. Just the fifth and the second string. And then play those together and then play the third string. And then do the mute. Okay, and now we have this part right here. And this is what I showed you before, where basically you're gonna wanna just think of this as starting with a C, but add your pinky on the fourth fret of the fourth string. And then the next chord is just taking that C shape and sliding it up one fret, fourth fret and third fret on the uh, fifth and fourth strings. And same deal with those as with you kind of want to silence the strings after each of those, just by lifting up your left hand. Remember, keep them on the strings, but lift them off the fretboard. And then we're going to go to a C, the uh, fifth and fourth strings. But we're going to hammer on that fifth string, or the fourth string. All right? And then sort of silence the strings again. And then we're basically going to do a similar hammer on. It's just our, our index, our middle fingers hammering it on on the fourth string, but it's the first fret. So, and uh, and the last note is basically going to stay on the fourth string. We're not going up to the third string like we will with the C. So practice those two in repetition if you want. And this is a good way to practice any song in general, usually, is if you find um, two little chords or whatever, part of a riff that are kind of difficult, um, practice them just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, right? So we have the, the G sharp to the G is one example. Yeah, just get comfortable doing this. <clears throat> Another one is this C, uh, weird thing with the C with the pinky, right? And then the very end. The whole thing then would sound like this. All right, so uh, one last thing I want to show you here is a cool way to sort of spice this up is with these two chords that I have highlighted here, what you can do is instead of pinching the fifth and second strings together, so look on the A minor on the second measure, right? Normally we're gonna pinch the fifth and second strings together. So pinch the fifth and second and then play the third, right? What we can do though instead is play the second string first, and then play the fifth string, and then play the third string, so. As opposed to this. This is pinching. And this is them sort of, I don't know if syncopated is the right word. It reminds me of ragtime, right? It's like ragged in the sense that they're not happening at the same time. They're sort of um, off beat there. And the same thing happens with the C in the beginning of the third measure. As opposed to this. So here's what the whole sequence sounds like if you do this sort of uh, ragged, sort of uh, rhythmic spice up, whatever you want to call this. trick you can do. So um, I'm going to stop this video here. I think that hopefully got you uh, will get you over the hump with this little intro sequence. Again, get the PDF, print it out if you can. Just use that as a practice aid. Take it slow. Learn the chords by themselves. And then 
work on the finger style one measure at a time, and I think you'll be in good shape. So I uh, hope this is helpful. Um, keep an eye out for a lesson uh, for this entire song. Um, whether it's finger style or strummy, I'll work something out. This is too fun of a song not to sort of figure out the rest of it. But I wanted to, to make this and get you going with it. So hope this is helpful, and uh, check out the rest of my stuff. Thanks to all of you who support me on Patreon, through the tip jar. Uh, thanks for all the emails and comments you all sent. Really appreciate it. Keeps me going. And um, until next time, have a good day, my friends. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.